Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Deanna, also known as Dee's Curve. I am here in New Orleans for Essence Festival. I'm excited. I came in really early this morning. Like, my flight left Texas at 5 a.m. So it was really early. When I got in, I got in at like 9, and thankfully I was able to check into my room at 9 a.m. The room was ready. So shout out to this hotel. I can't pronounce it, but shout out to them. Also, shout out to them for having a robe that fits a plus size body. Listen, it'd be a struggle in some hotels because one size robes do not fit all. But anyways, I took a nap and I just took a shower and I'm ready to get refreshed and go out to the convention center, just explore New Orleans, wherever the road takes me. So I figured I should do a little get ready with me, a little chit chat, get ready with me. I just washed my face and my face is very, very dry. Um, so we're gonna do whole skincare, makeup, outfit, the whole shebang. We're gonna get ready together because I ain't got nobody else here, so you're my company, okay? So if you're interested in getting ready with me, keep on watching. First things first, I am an unpacker. Yeah, I unpack everything, it just makes my life easy. So this is skincare over here, body care over here. Let's get into it. You guys, it is very, very, very hot. Like, when I came into the hotel this morning, they gave me a paper that says excessive heat warning. Texas is pretty hot too, so I think I'm prepared, but lots of sunscreen. Whew, it is just so hot. So we're gonna first start off with our toner. The skincare routine pretty much stays the same. I have like a really bad breakout right here and right here. Life, you know, what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it? I already told you guys, I stopped beating myself up about breakouts. My period is about to come, so this is definitely a hormonal breakout. So it just is what it is, okay? Oh, but it's like, it's a kind of sensitive. But it's all right, it's gonna be okay. So what have you guys been up to? What's going on? How's life? Anything exciting coming up? Um, it is summer and I'm excited about that and I told you guys I was gonna I was gonna do things this summer I was gonna get out of my house and do things this summer and here I am checking one of these things off of my bucket list because I did say I wanted to attend a music a festival and here I am at a festival so I'm already checking stuff off of my summer bucket list if you haven't seen my summer bucket list video I'll link it below so go check it out. I'm already I'm already knocking things off of my summer bucket list. Like so, you guys gotta catch up. So we've toned our face. I think I'm gonna go in. I don't want to put too much product on my face to be quite honest. I think I'm gonna go in with this for um for my skin serum. Tip, always try to like not put the, the dropper on your skin because that's how you transfer bacteria from your face to the product. Even though your face is clean, it still has bacteria. So you don't want to make the dropper touch your skin. Moisturizer, our tried and true Clinique, even better. This is good for dark spots. I don't know, I feel like maybe this product doesn't work on me anymore because I have literally been using it for like five years, but I haven't found a moisturizer that I like more. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. After I, um, I'm i done with my skincare, I'm gonna do makeup. And I'm not really gonna talk you guys through my makeup process because you guys already know. I don't even know what I'd be doing with makeup. So we're on, once I'm done with skincare, we'll like chat about something else because I have I have some things I want to talk to y'all about. I have some things I want to talk to y'all about. So let's just get over, get the skincare part done. I don't have any eye cream. Do you guys use eye cream regularly? And do you have an eye cream that you would recommend? I use the Ole Henriksen one, but mine is done. And I forgot to buy it when I went to Sephora. So now we need some sunscreen. You guys already know. Super goop. I love this thing. This thing feels like primer, honestly. I absolutely love it. I even have the body version of it. I'll show you guys in a second. I have a lot on my hands. With this heat, 
you have to go crazy with the sunscreen. Your skin will thank you, okay? Oh, oh. Okay, so my face is done in terms of skincare. I feel good. Let me show you guys the body super goop. I have the oil and I have the stick. So I'm a super goop girly, period. Through and through. All right, I'm gonna take the camera to the bedroom area because the lighting in there is really bright and natural and I think I wanna try to do my makeup in that lighting. So let's go. So I'm facing the window, I'm getting natural light. And I think I may go live because I feel like if I go live, the live can uh, push the conversation. You guys think I should go live? What you think? Let's go live for a little bit. I should probably put the camera on the same side so I could like be looking at in one direction. Yeah, let's do that. Hey, lovely people. I am getting ready to go to the Essence Festival festivities. I had to take a nap because my flight was so early. Like I got here at like 8 a.m. Well, actually like 7 a.m. By the time I got to my hotel, it was like 8.30 a.m. So I needed to take a nap. I am just doing my makeup. I'm also recording a get ready with me. So my camera is back there. If you guys see me looking up, I'm looking at my camera. But I figured I'd just come on. I don't think I've been... Hi, DK. I don't think I've been on live in so long. I can't remember the last time I was on live. How are you, DK? It's been a while. I hope you've been good. Are you guys doing anything fun? Um, Are you guys doing anything fun for 4th of July? Y'all, it's so hot. I mean, like, it's hot, okay? It's like it's been in the hundreds like for the last two weeks and New Orleans is even hotter than Texas so yeah I'm, I don't know I don't even know why I'm putting on makeup right now because it's probably just gonna melt off if I'm being honest but I want to be cute so I want to do a little thing and I, I also got these two setting sprays that everybody on TikTok says if you put these two setting sprays together your makeup is not gonna move so I'm hoping that this comes through for me this time. But yeah, we're just getting ready. I mean, it doesn't matter much because the mirror is over here, so I'm just always gonna be looking over there. But anyways, you guys, we can, we can still talk. We can still chat it up. So I already primed my face and everything, and now we're gonna use the bone. I told you guys I wasn't gonna talk to this, so anyways, 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 anyways. As you can see, I don't do get ready with, get readies with me a lot. So, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. But I wanted to talk to you guys about something. Do you guys feel like everyone has, well, I think everybody agrees that everyone has specific talents that's like special to them. And what I think about that is like, there's just some things that certain people are good at. like yeah they get better when they practice it or maybe if they go to school to like formally learn it but there's just some things that people are just born with and like you wonder you could you could sometimes tell from since they're a kid like you know your parents will say things like oh Deanna was always able to do this or Deanna always caught on to this very very easily and my thing is do you guys feel like we need to capitalize on those natural talents or do we just keep them to ourselves and enjoy them or do you feel like you know personally you have a talent that you haven't tapped into and what's the reason for that like are you afraid to use that talent are you scared that like you know I don't know something may go wrong or a lot of times when people like monetize their talents it's not fun anymore like what what is the fear holding you back from not utilizing your natural talents if you're not and if you are 
like kudos to you and i ask that because i've identified a talent or a gift and i think i use it but i honestly don't know if i use it to its full um capacity and that talent or that i think it's more of a gift honestly but the gift is is like a making people feel very very comfortable sharing with me um and i discovered this gift or i started to recognize this gift when like people that i barely know would like reach out to me and share very 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 deep dark secrets or maybe not even secrets but like things they're struggling with that they wouldn't necessarily want the world to know or like relationship issues they're having that they wouldn't want the world to know and they will just share it with me and at first I used to think like bro why are these people telling me these things and then the more it happened the more I realized like man Deanna this may be your gift because for someone to share, there there are some people who just love to tell their business, right? These people aside, I feel like for someone to share something with you, you have to create an environment that's welcoming, that's relaxing, that's safe. And not a lot of people know how to create that environment. And I don't really see myself doing anything special to create that environment, but time and time again, People will come to me and share things and ask for my thoughts, ask for my advice. And sometimes they just want me to listen to them vent. And I, like recently I asked someone who did just that. I was like, you know, how are you comfortable telling me this thing? Cause this thing is like, whoa, this thing is a lot. And they were like, honestly, you just have this calm spirit about you. You have a non-judgmental spirit that just makes you comfortable and I was like wow I started to really think about that like she said that to me and I think she was just obviously just talking just answering my question but it really had me thinking like Deanna this is a gift and the other part of that gift is a lot of people if someone was to share with them something that's very very heavy they will feel overwhelmed by it like they can't take on other people's problems but when people come and share their problems or their issues with me, it doesn't weigh me down. It literally don't weigh me down at all. I, I don't internalize other people's problems even when they share it with me. I listen, I try my best to not give advice if I'm not qualified to give advice in that area. But if you know they ask for my thoughts, I can share my personal thoughts. Of course, I do not judge. I always just allow people to share and I never thought that was a talent I never thought that was a gift but I'm starting to realize that it's a gift and am I using that gift to the best of you know my ability or am I like capitalized not capitalizing in a sense of like making money off of it or anything like that but like am I using it the best way that I could I don't think that I am so that just really got me thinking like what do you guys think I want to hear your thoughts and it's not to like brag and say oh people just tell me their business it's really not that it's really something I've been thinking about and I'm like man did I miss my calling like should I have been a therapist or should I have been like a counselor or something I don't know that literally has me thinking and just have me like reevaluating everything you guys and so i want to hear your thoughts on it is there something that people always tell you like bro you're good at this and you just feel like oh this isn't nothing i just do this so easily i would love to hear and if you already know what your gifts are and you're like actively using your gifts how did you figure that out? Is it by trial and error? Is it by other people telling you and you listening? Like, talk to me, y'all. Talk to me because I feel like I'm not, I need to tap into this gift a little bit more and, you know, take it seriously and not just see it as, oh, you know, people just like to tell me their stuff. So, 
want to talk to you guys about that. You gotta stay hydrated. So I am putting on my concealer. I like to wet my beauty blender with a little setting spray. Y'all, this room is kind of hot. I don't know if it's the window because this big window definitely attracts the heat. But I'm gonna need this AC to be cranked up and I put it all the way down. And the room is still not cold. It's just like room temperature it feels like. And I can't, I can't deal with a room temperature room. It needs to be cold. Especially when I come from outside and outside is so hot. I can't come in a room temperature room. It needs to be cold. I need to be, I need to be cold. And then to go to sleep, I hate, 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 hate to go to sleep when it's hot. Like, uh -uh, I won't sleep well. I'll be sweating in my sleep. And who wants to be sweating in their sleep, you know? That's like a huge pet peeve of my, is, I don't know if it's a pet peeve, but I'd be annoyed when, I'm, when I can't sleep good, because I like my sleep. Ask any of my friends, don't call me at 10 o'clock because I'm in the bed, okay? I'm sleeping. You need to get your beauty rest. Your body needs to rejuvenate. I go to bed on time and I don't like to go in my bed and then I'm sweating and I can't sleep. So this, this situation needs to get taken care of. But speaking of pet peeve, I saw this post. It might've been on Instagram or maybe it was TikTok where people were talking about their work pet peeves. And I have a work pet peeve. <laughs> and maybe you do too. Tell me if this is a pet peeve of yours. But my biggest pet peeve as it relates to work is somebody sending me an email and within minutes sending me a text to tell me they sent me an email. Oh my God. I'm looking out the window, you guys, because Kamala Harris, the vice president, is actually staying. She's in New Orleans for Essence Festival and she's staying at a hotel like just up the street. And they blocked off all the roads and stuff. And it looked like there's something happening on the street. I need to hurry up and get ready so I can go outside and see what the big fuss is about. But anyways, as I was saying, one of my biggest pet peeves is people who email me and then text me to tell me, hey, I sent you an email. Like, um, the same phone you sent me the email on, that you sent me the text on, is the same phone I'ma see the notification of the email. So you think I'm gonna respond faster because you sent me a text? Unless it's something urgent, okay? If it's something urgent that requires my immediate attention, or it's like time sensitive or something, I can understand you sending me a text to say, hey, I just sent you an email and it actually is time sensitive. I would you know, appreciate if you could take a look at it as soon as you're able. But if you're sending me a basic email that's not urgent, that doesn't require any urgent response, why are you texting me to tell me you sent me an email? That is just such a pet peeve of mine. I'd be like, bruh, now I don't even want to respond to your email because what was the reason for that? What is the reason, huh? What is the reason? I don't like it. So in the comments below, let me know. Let me know your pet peeves as it relates to work. I have more. I have more, okay? <laughs> I have more, but you know, I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm just complaining about work. But there are a lot of little things that people do and I'm just like, bruh, are you really a working professional? Is that is that what we do as working professionals? You went to school, you have an education, you're an educated individual, you have working experience and this is how you behave? Like, it don't make no sense to me. I just be looking at people like, you did what? And you did, you did it why? Like, make it make sense, please. A lot of things don't be making sense. A lot of things don't be making sense, bro. 
And I'll just be like, please make it make sense. I can't take this. You're supposed to always blend your contour up because you don't want to make your face droopy. <laughs> Y'all, I wash my brushes and oh, it's working. I love doing makeup with like clean brushes. I need to clean my brushes more often to be quite honest, but it, sometimes it just takes too long. But yeah, put it on makeup with like fresh brushes. Ooh. Undefeated feeling, honestly. I can really see the difference contour makes with my face. And that's a step I used to skip a lot, but now I don't skip it. We gonna contour this face, okay? We gonna give you yourself a little, a little shape. Nothing crazy, I don't contour my nose. But the little face, yeah. A little shink drink. <laughs> I just might be a hope. I hope. Listen, Sima Loka was in her bag with that album, okay? She was in her bag. You talk about no skips. That album is a no skip album. Argue with your mama. It's like whenever I I want to do like a little wind down, I always, always, always go to that album. What's it called? What's the name of the album? I don't even remember the name of it. But I always have it on repeat. Over it. Yeah. And I be over it. <laughs> you could tell like she was like, this is my chance. Like, this is my moment. And I'm gonna take it. And I'm not gonna leave nothing in the studio. She, she put her all into that album, okay? Now she's a little weird. She be doing weird stuff. And she be having like drama with her baby daddy. And you know, usual celebrity stuff, which I could care less about. I just care about the music and honey. Summer did what needed to do. Summer need Summer did what needed to be done. And speaking of summer, my cousins and I were talking and we were like kind of talking about back in the day summer. Well not really, we weren't necessarily talking about back in the day summer, but the conversation reminded me of summer. So basically when my grandmother passed away, we all went back home for the funeral, of course. And then I also have cousins who currently live in Dominica. So those cousins were there. And then we did a cousin island tour. I have a whole video on my channel about it. I'll link it in the description box. Any video I mention in this video, I'm gonna link it below. So we did like a cousin island tour. We went to Screws. We went to, did we go to Cathedral Falls, I think it's called. And we did a little hike. My cousins, my cousin cooked, we had drinks. You know, the usual island tour vibes, right? So we were like, bro, we were looking at pictures from that day. And that day was just like, although it was a sad time while we were home, that trip was just like really nice. We didn't invite anybody else. It was just cousins. And you know, we just got to talk and laugh and catch up and whatever. And so we have a cousin group chat and one of my cousin posted pictures from that day in the group chat. And basically she was like, bro, one again. And I'm like, man, we need to do something again. It's time, it's been like two, going on two years since we did the last trip. So I was like, when is the next time we're all gonna be in Dominica? We need to, we need to do something the next time we're gonna be in Dominica. And then they, we were like making suggestions or whatever. And then I was like, we need to go to Goboa. Now, if you're from Dominica, you maybe know where Goboa is, but I doubt it because Goboa is in the village that I was raised in, which is the village of Bourne. And nobody even know where that village is because it's so small. But growing up, we used to go to the garden 
my uncle had a garden in this place called Gobwa. It, it, it was not inside the village. You had to like, not hike, but it was kind of like a hike. I mean, back then we didn't call it a hike. It was just a walk, but it was a long uphill walk. So it was basically a hike. But we used to go to the garden and basically torment my uncle's life, okay? <laughs> we were such troublesome kids. We would like pick all the mangoes on the tree, which is fine. I mean, that wasn't a problem. But you know, he would cook his little pot on the on the fire, on the wood. And we, as soon as he cooked, we were ready to eat up all his food. And he would be working hard because he's not going to the garden for fun. He's going to the garden to either plant stuff that he needs to sell or to harvest stuff. And honestly, we were of no help to him. We just used to like make his life terrible. I, I'm sure he's just like, bro, why did I bring these kids with me? But it was summertime and we needed to be outside. We loved, loved going to the garden with him, picking mangoes, playing games, just like being outside and being kids. It was just so much fun growing up. And that was like stuff we didn't even like think was fun, but looking back at it, we had so much fun growing up as kids. We used to, you know what we used to do? <laughs> now this is a little graphic, but we would like catch lizards, literally. <laughs> ah, tell me you grew up in the island without telling me you grew up in the islands. We used to catch lizards and we used to cut them open. Okay, we used to have, we were surgeons. We used to cut, cut catch lizards and cut them open, like literally cut them down the middle and have surgery. And one time, my cousin, who's one of my older cousins, he told me that lizards don't bite. You know how older cousins could convince you to do things? So he's like, Deanna, lizards don't bite. You can put, you can put your finger in the lizard's mouth. It don't bite. So I literally shoved my finger into a lizard's mouth and it bit the hell out of me, okay? It bit the hell out of me. Lizards do bite. And that's the thing. Older male cousins, they were so mean. <laughs> Thankfully, I only had one. But he was he would do like mischievous stuff to us. And we just used to take it because you know we like hanging out with our older cousin. But man, growing up, I I was an only child for a very long time. Like my mom doesn't have any other kids. Only my dad has other kids, but I'm much, much, much older than all of my siblings. I'm like 12 years older than my siblings. So I didn't really grow up with them, but I grew up with my cousins. And honestly, I don't know what, there's something not working right with this makeup. And I'm not, I'm a little bit over it, honestly. But something's not going right with this blush. But anyways, um, what was I saying? Yeah, I grew up with my cousins, so I never really felt like I was an only child, if I'm being honest, because my cousin Geraldine and I, you guys know Geraldine, she's always on my channel whenever I go to Dominica. We grew up together, like we lived in the same house, so she was kind of like my sister, and we're only a few months apart. I was born in September, and then she was born in January of the next year. So honestly, we just grew up as sisters. My mom used to like dress us the same. She used to put us in the same outfits. Like if I was wearing pink, Jordan was wearing blue. Or if Jordan was wearing red, I was wearing orange, but of the same thing. So she used to kind of like dress us like twins because we were so close in age and we were always been the same size. Now both me and her are like thick, thick and trying to lose weight. <laughs> But it's so funny because growing up, we were the same size. We've always been the same size. We always used to like compare, compare our, our breasts and stuff. <laughs> you know, like growing up as kids, you want to see if your breast is growing. And me and Jordan used to like look at our breasts and compare each other <laughs> to see which one was bigger. <laughs> Y'all don't judge me. You guys did the same as kids, okay? You guys did the same. And now I'm just like, please Lord, take the breast away. They're both, they're too big. And I think Jillian could agree, but yeah summertime was a vibe growing up in the caribbean it was really a vibe i enjoyed my summers i remember my mom used to always make sure that the kitchen the pantry was full okay that was her job was to make sure that whenever she left us at home 
for her to like go to work and stuff, we had food to eat. Now she wasn't gonna cook it. Like a lot of times some parents would probably like cook the food and you know, you would have food to eat. My mom was not a big cooker. She wasn't gonna cook the food, but the food would be there. So me and Jillian used to be cooking. Okay, when I tell you cooking, we used to be cooking up a storm. Me and Jillian used to make hot dogs. <laughs> I'm bringing back all the memories. Guys, I'm gonna try the setting spray. This one and this one together. Everybody says like, it's the un undefeated duo for keeping your makeup on. It feels good on your skin. It doesn't feel wet and it smells good too. It's by Charlotte Tilbury, I'll link it below. And then the other one is by One Size, which is a newer brand. It's mattifying and waterproof setting spray. And this is what we need because the sun, it's hot. But anyways, me and Jenna used to make hot dogs. Like, y'all know hot dogs. Okay, you guys know what is a hot dog. But it used to come in a pack. And we used to boil the hot dogs. Because we kept it in the freezer. We would boil the hot dogs. And it would get really, really fat when you boiled it. And then we would cut it up with ketchup and onions. And we used to put so much oil. Like, the, the hot dogs used to be, like, swimming in oil. And then a bread bus. If you're not from the Caribbean, I don't know if you know this or if you can relate. But depending on where you lived in Dominica, there was no shops. Like, there was no bread shops. There was no bakeries. So there would be a bus, kind of like an ice cream truck. The, the same concept of an ice cream truck, how the ice cream truck drives around and sells ice cream. Well, this bus would drive around and sell bread. So the bus would drive around and we would um, get bread from the bus, hot dogs. We always, always had a salad because we had vegetables growing in the backyard. This is real island life, okay? This is real island Caribbean life. So we had lettuce, uh, cucumbers, carrots, all that stuff in our backyard. We could just, and I'm not talking about in a little box, like how people be farming in their kitchen. I'm talking real legit beds of lettuce, things of carrots, all the seasonings you could need. We had it in the backyard. So we always used to have a, uh, uh, um, a salad, hot dogs, eggs, bread. We used to just make so much food just because the food was there. And I'm gonna spray this one now. And then, after we sat, I feel like I'm wasting the product, but whatever. After we sat and ate, we used to take a break, and then we used to clean the kitchen. And the kitchen was made of tiles, and me and Jen used to like wet the floor and slide on the floor. <laughs> We just used to do foolishness. We just used to do foolishness. But our childhood was so much fun. Like, we really legit just had a good time. It wasn't like anything special, but we made fun. And our, like, we made ourselves have fun. We did things to have fun. And we just, you know, we had a good summer. So anyways, that's, this is the makeup. I need to do my lip. And then we're going to get dressed. Okay, we are back in the bathroom to do my hair. I kind of want to leave some out at the front. But I want to do like a really high bun because it's hot and I don't really want, I don't really want my hair touching my, my face, my, my back, you know? So let's see what we can do. We could do a high bun. What do you guys think? Or a high ponytail maybe? I'm kind of feeling the bun, let's see. I love me some knotless braids mainly because you can you can move the braids the day because I got these braids yesterday if these were like regular back in the day braids you know you can't touch those braids until like three days later because it'd be so tight let's see I want to leave some of the curlies out this is a high bun but I don't know if I'm really feeling this it kind of just looks like it's sitting on top of my head i don't like that we're gonna have to try it again this is like the concept of this is a little better you just gotta make it a little neater and more sturdy i'm gonna turn off the camera because clearly i can't concentrate so i think i decided to just do a ponytail and not a bun. 
yeah i think that's what we're gonna go with we'll see next it's time to get dressed and for outfits ooh, look at the lighting i love it for outfits today we are doing something different i'm trying to put this down for you guys so i'm wearing a mini skirt i know i know and my damn corset this is nothing new i've had this before and i'm wearing it with sneakers i'm excited for this outfit i pictured it in my head it looks good in my head hopefully it looks good in person i'm also going to try to do a little get ready with me for instagram so let's see if i can film both at the same time Accessories, these I'm gonna use my coach tabby and my new in kicks. Y'all see the vision, you see the vibe. It's like sporty but still cute, you know. I think it's coming together nicely. So for perfume, I use the Dior. I don't even remember the name of this perfume, but that's what I used, and I think I, I decided to like put my hair out of my face because I have a lot going on here. These big earrings, this little choker. So I need the hair back, you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is the final fit. I'll pop up some photos if I get them. And we are all ready to hit the road. There will be a, um, a New Orleans vlog, so You'll see all the activities and stuff I get into on the New Orleans vlog. But thank you for getting ready with me. Interact with me in the comments. I know I asked a lot of questions, asked for your thoughts on a lot of things in this video. So I would appreciate if you, you know, respond and keep the dialogue going in the comments down below. I really love how this outfit came out. It's out of my comfort zone, but it's very cute, very chic. I like it, very sporty, comfy. I like it. I think it's cute. Hopefully I get a good picture. But anyways, you guys, if you made it this far and you're not subscribed, why not? Why not? Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.